Good morning. Welcome to North Springfield Presbyterian Church on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost. A couple announcements today, and you can find uh, a yellow and a purple sheet in the narthex. The yellow one is about Barbara Williams' birthday, and she's turning 90 on August 23rd, and Julie would like us to send her cards. So her address is on this yellow sheet of paper. And also about uh, Pastor Fred's memorial services out in the, the narthex on purple. Anybody else? Just a reminder, as you're looking at your cares and concerns in the bulletin, uh, if you have additions, please let the office know. Also, if you're looking at it and you see that someone can be taken off of the, uh, the list, uh, please let the office know that as well. Please stand and join in our call to worship. All who love the Lord, draw near. Like all the olive trees in the house of the Lord, we will trust in the steadfast love of God forever and ever. All who love the Lord our God, draw near. We will thank the Lord forever because of what the mighty one has done. All who love the Lord our God, draw near to worship. In the presence of the faithful, we will praise and worship God in word and song. Grant us this day, O God, not to be overtaken by anxious thoughts that can make us feel that you are not near. Give us the chance to sit at your feet, to enjoy every word and every musical note that we may feel your real presence and in turn, live out that presence in every aspect of our lives. Prepare us as we journey as your people to worship and to obey. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the image of the invisible God and the firstborn over all creation. Amen. Amen. We come to the font to remember that the font connects our confession of sin with the grace and cleansing of our baptism and our baptismal call every day to new life in Christ.
God calls for our full-time devotion. And all that we think and do, God's will is to hold first place. Our worship is hollow and empty if it is only a small, separate compartment in our lives. No matter how good we judge ourselves to be, all of us need a time of reorientation and reconciliation. That is why communally and individually we confess our sin. Take away our distractions, O God, so we may be confronted by your expectation of us. We realize that our busyness and our striving after things has fallen on our awareness of you. We have sought fulfillment in ways that deny you and hurt other people, sometimes contributing to the trampling on of the needy and the freedom. Let us take this time of silence for personal reflection and confession. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Do you truly want to be forgiven? If that is your honest choice, experience that forgiveness now in the very core of your being. Continue in faith, not shifting from the hope of the gospel. Dwell consciously in God's presence in the midst of all you do every single day. In the mystery of Jesus Christ, we are truly forgiven and reconciled to our Creator. Thanks be to God. As God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Please turn to each other with signs and words of peace and reconciliation. For those of you at home, the peace of Christ be with you. our prayer for illumination. We are gathered at the feet of Jesus to learn what you expect of us, O God. We are seeking a word of hope amid all the bad news, the senseless suffering, and the evil deceit that surrounds us. We want to become mature in faith and responsible in action so that you can work through us to bring changes that are needed in our world. Give us ears to hear your word today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today is from Amos. This is what the Lord God showed me, a basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, the end has come upon my people Israel. I will never pass, I will never again pass by them. The songs of the temple shall become wailings in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, 
When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the epa small and the shekel great and practice deceit with false balances. Buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account? And everyone mourn who lives in it. And all of it rise like the Nile. And be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. I will bring sackcloth on all loins and baldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only son and the day of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and from, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle reading. Jesus is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to him all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, become a servant of this gospel. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body. That is the church. I become a servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make a word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he who we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom so that we may present 
everyone mature in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for the choir, for your addition to our service, and for uh, that addition at, at Goodyear Heights Church. I don't know if you, everybody knows this, but um, our choir traveled over to Goodyear Heights Church this morning and blessed them with the choir. So thank you to all the choir members for doing that, and, and um, I'm going to be watching to see if anybody's fallen asleep. <laughs> this is their second go-round. <laughs> A reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. Let us listen for what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. The Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Holy God, this is the time when we quiet our hearts and minds 
to pay attention to what you have to say to us today. By the power of your Holy Spirit, give us understanding. And having heard your word read and proclaimed, we may live lives worthy of you. Amen. In today's Gospel reading, we find Jesus coming to the home of his friend Martha. The Greek word that's used here to describe how Martha welcomes him is hypodexito, as a welcomed guest. It refers to the kind of hospitality that hosts were expected to extend in the ancient Middle East. In our Western culture, hospitality is seen as socially optional. But not so for Martha, as the owner of a house in her culture, she had a moral duty to extend hospitality to ever, whoever showed up at her door. That duty even included opening her home to strangers, whether she wanted to or not. Unlike hospitality in our Western tradition, the extension of hospitality didn't necessarily include the idea of creating and building a relationship with the guest. When Jesus enters Martha's home, she falls into the morally and socially prescribed routines for making a guest feel welcome and comfortable. She gets so caught up in those routines and tasks that she entirely loses sight of her guest and her relationship with him. She forgets that Jesus isn't just another house guest to whom duty is owed and for whom task must be done. Her sister Mary, though, she doesn't forget. Mary's joy in her relationship with Jesus leads her to forget what she owes him as a guest. All she wants to do is to be near him as much as she can for as long as he's there. Mary is a very eager to be a disciple, sitting as she did at Jesus' feet, spellbound by his words. And there's no telling how long she'd been sitting in rapt attention when Martha reached the limit of her selfless tolerance and interrupted to ask if Jesus cared about the injustice his presence had caused. Except for Martha's outburst, we can imagine the same scene in countless houses as the 70 set out to proclaim the gospel. Some must have gathered to hear what the disciples had to say, while others busied themselves with the meal and the table service and other tasks. And so it goes in most households, including the household of faith. Some are destined to live out their discipleship in the details of the common life, preparing meals, counting money, caring for the homebound, organizing outreach to, outreach to the poor. Others are disciples in service to the word, study and prayer, worship and preaching, evangelism and teaching. Both are necessary, as Luke will soon point out in the book of Acts. But in these two scenes, Luke puts emphasis on the latter, there is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, Jesus says. And this implies that a community that's hospitable to Christ is a community marked by the attention the community gives to God's word. A church that has been led, in Jesus' words, to be worried and distracted by many things inevitably will be a community that dwells in the shallows of work and activities and events designed simply to perpetuate the institution. Discussions will be held and decisions will be made in meetings in a manner that's without a hint of God's reign. Food and drink will appear at the table and meals shared without Christ being recognized in the breaking of the bread. Social issues will be addressed, but the gospel missed in acts that lend themselves to politics as usual 
Members return from session and committee meetings and other church work, including church work days and outreach. As clueless and as empty as they were when they started. Endless meetings and work breed resentment in otherwise pleasant Christians because the church's business is being done without any word of God whom they thought that they had agreed to serve. On the other hand, when a congregation is led to position itself at Christ's feet, reading scripture together and growing as they seek its meaning, listening to substantive sermons and wrestling like Jacob for God's blessing, studying and nurturing a faith that seeks understanding, then even the details of the common life begin to resound with the good news. Still, there's this matter of the necessary work into which some are thrown when God's dominion draws near. Luke not only presumed people would be in a kitchen preparing food and drink for the 70 on this mission, he also acknowledged the need for a standing office composed of seven men of good standing, full of spirit and of wisdom, who would be given the task of waiting on tables. What then should the church make of Jesus' rebuke of Martha, for whom the devil apparently was in the details? The nature of hospitality for which Jesus seeks, writes Joel Green in the New International Commentary, is realized in attending to one's guests. Yet, Martha's speech is centered on me talk three times. Though she refers to Jesus as Lord, she's concerned with his assistance in her plans and not to learn from him. When anxiety and well-doing becomes the measure of our hospitality, then the church has forgotten the one that we've been gathered to serve. When Christ is proclaimed as instrumental to the church's program or certain individual's agendas, then the community has ceased to attend the word that first called it into being. Life is full of things that need to be done. Obligations in the world abound. None of us can escape that. Even in the church, where the business of considering our relationship with Jesus is supposed to be our top priority, we can get distracted, just like Martha did. We can get so caught up in all the many things that we're doing for Jesus that we neglect our relationship with Jesus. Sometimes church life doesn't resemble a sanctuary where we can rest at the feet of Jesus, maintaining the building and the property, generating budgets, launching outreach efforts. There are all things that have to be done. But problems arise when we allow these many activities to take priority over developing the intimate and fulfilling relationship with Christ that we need. Notice how Jesus doesn't chastise Martha for doing her many tasks. What he chastises her for is allowing those tasks to distract her to the point where she neglects the most important thing. Her relationship with him. When we neglect our relationship with Jesus, we risk becoming like Martha. Bad-tempered, argumentative, uncooperative complainers about all the work that needs to be done and all the people who aren't helping us do it. I believe this story of Two Sisters offers us an ongoing plea from the Lord to focus on him, to give him our continuous, full-time attention. This same Lord calls us to focus on him when we gather for worship on Sunday. And whenever or wherever we gather together to move from our place of being worried and distracted by many things, 
to one where we are in touch with the one thing that we absolutely need, the good part, the better part. Only there will we connect with our triune God, the one and only source that brings both energy and peace. Jesus wants a relationship with us that will feed every aspect of our lives and work. If we invest ourselves in him, the gifts we receive in in return will never, ever be taken away. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us to not be worried or distracted. And not to minimize gifts or trivialize talents that would diminish our and others' humanity. Help us all to be worthy and to see everyone else as worthy to sit at the feet of Jesus. And help us in all we do, no matter what we're doing, to bask in the presence of Jesus, who is always and ever our invited and welcomed guest. Amen. Now let us stand together for the affirmation of faith, which is the Apostles' Creed, which is in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Thank you. 
gathered together as God's people in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need in all of God's creation. God of all ages, gather your universal church around the rich mysteries you have set before your people. Grant us understanding of your word and be revealed to us in the celebration of your sacraments. Send us forth as witnesses of your great mysteries. Lord, in your mercy. We are prayer. Nourish this congregation that we may proclaim your word with power and be strengthened to do your work. Bless this community of faith with unity and bless the ministry and mission we do in your name. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Encourage conservation efforts around the world in order that air, soil, and water might be made clean for the sake of future generations. Bring renewal to all creation and to your people as we use the Earth's resources. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give humility, strength, and compassion to all leaders. Raise up advocates on behalf of those in need who will speak out for justice and against violence and war in our communities, in our country, and in the world. Hear our prayers for our community of Akron and its struggles at this time. For the many grieving communities dealing with mass shootings. For our country dealing with the violence and death at our nation's capital. And for Ukraine as the leaders, soldiers, and citizens struggle to keep their land, their homes, and their country. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Be with those who suffer from human trafficking, homelessness, addiction. Be with those who are grieving. And be with all those who are ill in mind, body, or spirit. Comfort them with your grace and empower your church to minister to them. Especially we pray for those on the prayer list of North Springfield Church, for Tom Tucky, and for all those we now name in our hearts, either silently or aloud. Pray for Jim in his travel. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Go with all those who travel in this vacation season. Lead them to share their gifts of faith and love wherever they go as they receive these gifts from you in the other places and faith communities they visit. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. As we remember the witness of the saints, keep us steadfast in faith so that the reconciliation you have offered through Christ might fully come to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, 
for God loves a cheerful giver. into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. And love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you 
and give you peace. And the people of God say, Amen.